Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us once again for Wednesdays with Ray. Today we are going to be going over lace knitting and lifelines, otherwise known as your knitting safety break. Now lifelines are one of my favorite things to use, not just in lace knitting, but they're a great thing to put in place anytime you're about to do something you're not super sure about, any kind of new technique, any kind of new stitch. It's a great way to move forward with confidence and as few consequences as possible. Today I will go over what a lifeline is and when it's appropriate to use it, a couple of different ways for placing one, the appropriate materials to use and what not to use, how to pick your stitches back up once you've had to pull out to your lifeline. First, let's go over the do's and don'ts of placing a lifeline with a stray piece of yarn. There are materials that are ideal to use and some that I would not recommend. Up on the top here, my preferred materials are a thin piece of superwash yarn. Superwash is nice because it won't felt to your stitches. It will stay very smooth and be very easy to pull back out. Likewise, a thin piece of cotton or linen yarn is ideal for this, especially if you're using wool, it won't felt to your stitches. You can even, in a pinch, use a length of dental floss. It will slide very easily through your stitches. There are definitely yarns I do not recommend using. For example, Thick or rustic single ply yarns are going to tend to catch on your stitches. This is going to be a problem when you're trying to remove it later and you may find that it felts to your active stitches. Even a thinner piece, sometimes even a superwash piece of single ply yarn can end up being very felty, particularly if you are already working with a single ply piece of yarn. Likewise, you never ever ever want to use a thicker yarn than what you're already working with. Ideally, you want to go as thin as possible. If I was to put this piece of yarn into a piece of lace weight or fingering weight, it would distort my stitches terribly, and it would be very obvious where I had placed my lifeline once I took it out. Also today, we will be going over how to place a lifeline using an extra cable for an interchangeable set of needles, but we're going to do this first. What is a lifeline? Why do we use it? What does it do? This is a very common technique to use in lace work because recovering drop stitches or even misplaced stitches can be so difficult, especially when working complex lace patterns. The way it acts as a safety break is you are going to place it in at a very specific point in your lace pattern. The lace pattern I have here today is a two row repeat. So I've done three pattern repeats and decided that was a good distance to place my first lifeline. You always want to be consistent about this placement. I always place mine so that I'm ready to work the first row of my lace repeat. This is so that you know exactly where to pick up if you do have to take it out. You don't have to have more than one lifeline placed at a time. Once I've worked the same amount up, I would place a new one. I would no longer need this old one. So what does it look like when we have to pull out to our lifeline? Mistakes and accidents happen with knitting, whether it's somebody getting a hold of your knitting, a child, a dog, or just somebody who didn't know any better and pulling out some stitches, dropping it out of your bag, or just misplacing a stitch. Sometimes we have to do some recovery. And it can be a bit more of a headache if we're worried about dropping further down in our pattern and having to start a section all over. That's where our safety break comes in. As you can see, I have a few stitches pulled out. This would be a big pain for me to recover, but it's not very far to my lifeline. Rather than try and pick up stitches with my needles or unknit a single stitch at a time, I can simply pull my yarn out and it will unravel, but only as far as that lifeline. From here, it is a simple matter to pick up my stitches and begin where I left off, and I've barely lost any time at all. To pick up these stitches, it's sometimes easier to do with a smaller needle just for the pickup, but do what works best for you. Just gonna go along the live stitches that are already held by your lifeline. I 
I have picked up all of those stitches. I haven't dropped a single one. My lifeline is still in place, and I'm ready to work on row one of my lace pattern. I have knitted past my line, and I am once again ready to start on row one. You never need more than one lifeline, if you remember me saying so. Once I have carefully checked my work for mistakes since that lifeline, there's no drop stitches, there's no mistakes. I can pull it out and replace it. You can place your lifeline while it is still on the needle. To do this method with waste yarn and a darning needle, I'd like to go in just a couple of stitches at a time. Pull the yarn through, but not all the way. You want to leave a tail. And then go through the next few. Working across this way until you have brought it through all of the stitches on the needle. At this point, my lifeline has been brought through all of my stitches. There's a tail on either end, so I'm not worried about it coming loose. And I know that I can continue knitting and only lose my work up to this point. Another method, if you are working on circular needles and you have an extra cable and interchangeable needles, is to simply let the cable be your lifeline. As you go to knit this row, rather than being left on, remove your working needle, screw it onto your extra cable, and work across. Once you reach the end of your row, pull the cable through your stitches, and unscrew the needle. This has the added benefit that if you have to pull back to this, all you have to do is attach your needles to the ends and your needles are already ready to go. If you don't have an extra cable, most needles that are interchangeable have a keyhole right here. Even some regular fixed circular needles will have a hole for this purpose that you can thread your lifeline through and then simply transfer your stitches over very quickly in order to facilitate pulling that lifeline through. And just like that, my lifeline is placed. While this method is often utilized specifically for lace knitting, I actually really like to encourage my first time sock knitters, even first time cablers to use this. It gives you a restart point, if you will. That way, if you make a mistake or you just want to be adventurous with a new technique, you can always go back to step one and try again without losing any of your work. As always, thank you for joining us today for Wednesdays with Ray and this tutorial. I hope that you will join us for our shawl knit along as it is going through almost the end of November and you are welcome to drop by at any time. If not, I hope that this new technique will help you boldly go to places in knitting that maybe you were afraid to go before.